There are few things in War Thunder more rage inducing than being blown up by Cass in your spawn. But as with anything in life, you need context. In this video, I want to try and answer the question, is Cass OP? So as you saw from the title of the video, I'm talking about top tier Cass here. So my question again, is top tier Cass overpowered? I'd say yes and no. Let me explain. I see a lot of player complaints in the game and in the forums about Cass being too overpowered. Now I play this game a lot, so I needed to recognize my own biases, you know, so I needed to kind of de my brain. I wanted to explore this in detail with an objective look to see if these claims are even just a little bit true. In my own personal experience with this game, most players' claims are anecdotal at best or misrepresent the truth at worst. In almost any game, confirmation bias is at play. I mean, you can go, you see, I got obliterated by an A-10 or I got yeeted by a K-52, therefore it must be overpowered. You always remember that one time close air support stomped a mud puddle on your butt, but no one ever remembers the dozens or hundreds of cast fails when they ended up shooting down that player. So alright, I know some of you may already be inching towards that dislike button, but hold on. You know, hopefully you can just watch to the end so I can explain this. As with most things um, that are controversial, hyperbole has overtaken the narrative here, and the truth lies somewhere in the middle, I think. So let's unwrap this for a bit. In my player experience, this is how I see the issue, and of course, this is my own opinion. Yours may differ, but I welcome different opinions on this channel. So full disclosure, I really enjoy realistic ground battles to the fullest. I try not to have any gaps in my lineups, so I vigorously grind close air support, fixed wing, and rotary wing, and I also grind all of the SPAAs I can. I want to frame this video in a way um, that makes it easy to understand because I can't cover every eventuality. So what I'm going to do is use a best and worst case scenario. And we're of course going to look at this from the perspective of the cast player. Alright, so the first case is the best case scenario. And this applies to whether you're using fixed wing cast or rotary wing cast. So the first element here is you have air superiority in the game. Things are a lot less complicated when you have that because you're not forced to engage enemy aircraft. And you know that opens you up to enemy SPAA and SAMs. You know, it, it never fails. When you try to engage enemy aircraft because you don't have air superiority, somebody on the ground is just waiting for you and takes advantage of that. So the next element is when you spawn. So early game spawn of Cass, um, the best case scenario is that no one on the enemy team spawned early game SPAA. So it's always awesome when you just really have nothing on the ground to oppose you. And of course the other is late game spawn of Cass when the enemy side is totally depleted and you're really just mopping up. This is actually pretty glorious because really nothing opposes you and you can take enemies out at your leisure. So the next element here is whom you face and what you face equipment wise. So enemy equipment and skill is what I'm talking about and what nation you're facing. So if you're facing nations with the worst top tier SPAAs like Italy, Japan and Israel, you're going to have a pretty easy time. Also, enemy SPAs that lack radar or radar with very short range is to your advantage because they're going to give delayed warning to their own team. Next uh, is being able to outrange the enemy weapons, period. You know, this puts you in a supreme position. Um, the next one here is you can avoid or delay acquisition due to BR mismatch. <laughs> what I mean here in blunt terms is people bringing uh, SPAAs that are way low tier, you know, not for the tier at all, totally outmatched. So um, that's always good when they when the enemies make a mistake, right? Don't ever interrupt it. All right. So next thing here in the best case scenario is when enemy SPA skill is questionable. I mean, that happens a lot. Um, and also when enemy ground forces lack situational awareness, you know, they just don't even know that you're there and they are intent for some reason on ignoring you like the problem will get better with time. You know, I've been able to rack up lots of kills just because the enemy ignores me. Um, and then, of course, the next logical thing is when the enemy team 
does not prioritize killing you or killing close air support on the other side. I mean, for the life of me, I don't understand sometimes why they don't prioritize killing um, the fixed wing or the rotary wing cast that's destroying them. All right, so we're still in the what you face and who you face category here. And the next thing, the next element is enemy um, SPAA with no automated tracking, you know, lack of lead indicators, which is poor equipment, right? You're going to have a better time if they don't have that. Also, enemy SPAA that doesn't have 360 degree radar coverage, like systems like the um, the ZSU-23-4 um, gun dish radar, right? It is kind of has a sector, like a little slice, and you're really not going to see anybody um, coming up behind you or from a threat azimuth that you're not thinking about. All right, so continuing with deficiencies here in enemy equipment, there are a lot of SPAs that just can't, they can't track fast enough. They can't traverse, you know, the gun system or the missile system fast enough to even keep up with enemy aircraft. So that's a win for you there. There are also a lot of enemy systems that are susceptible to flares. And my next one is a kind of a favorite. Players that keep that radar on, you know, they keep that radar on their SPAA energized and it just gives you early warning, especially when you have an RWR. All right, so next element, and we're still under best case scenario here, is what you have. So I already alluded to the RWR. So your equipment and your skill. If you have a radar warning receiver and you have countermeasures, um, that is already very good because you're going to be able to go defensive and most likely survive. And this point, which is especially good for helicopters, if you have the radar, the air-to-air -air radar and air-to-ground radar, like the KE-52 and the AH-64D and the MI-28NM, um, you are going to have supreme situational awareness. And if you have a weapon that fits the situation, like for example, the Vicar missile fits multiple situations. I can shoot down aircraft. I can blow up other helicopters. I can um, destroy vehicles on the ground. But you might not be flying a Russian helicopter with Vicar missiles. But in the best case scenario, you will have a weapon that fits any situation. All right, so mind you, we're still on best case scenario. And in this scenario, you have great acquisition systems. I mean, you can see things from range and you have thermal and um, acquisition is not an issue. You have standoff weapons like Maverick or Hellfire or Vicar or Cage 29T, um, weapons that give you a long arm to get to the enemy while staying out of threat range. And of course, you are proficient with your weapon system and you can readily exploit enemy weaknesses. All right, so the last thing in best case scenario, because this is gonna drive tactics and it's gonna ultimately drive, if you have helis and, and fixed wing cast, it'll drive what you pick and that's the map. So it depends on how many obstacles are on the map. Are there places for you to hide behind? Is there cover and concealment for you? Um, whether you're in an aircraft or in a helicopter, uh, is there cover and concealment for the enemy? Are there lots of built up areas where the enemy can hide? Like, is it an urban map, um, which generally is not good for helicopters unless you have good sight lines and, and even not that great for, um, for fixed wing casts. So, I mean, is there a friendly spotting on the ground? Like, is your team able to spot enemies because there's lots of wide open area? I mean, there's there are so many variables here that go into the map and, um, and, and what tactics you're going to use. So. The map is um, a large component of the best case scenario. Generally, what you would want here is places where you can hide, the enemy is out in the open, and your own team is spotting people on the ground like crazy. So you have so many targets um, that you really don't have enough weapons for them. So what I just did there was build some context around the best case scenario on why a cast player can look like a star, like he's just killing everybody. And you're like, what the hell is going on here? Um, but that's the best case scenario. And those probably are the ones that you remember. Like I said, the matches where you get a mud puddle stomped in you by jets and helicopters, you remember those, maybe because all these things lined up uh, for the enemy. Okay, so let's talk about the worst case scenario here. And remember, this is still from the perspective of the cast player. So. Worst case scenario, you don't have air superiority, which splits your attention between ground targets and scanning the airspace around you. So you go, you get spotted and you have to go defensive uh, or you get picked off by multiple enemies in the air or on the ground if you don't do it. 
So when you spawn in worst case scenario, you spawn early game, but there's already players waiting for you with their first or even their second spawn in an SPAA, which is pretty terrible news. Late game for you, worst case scenario is that the enemy isn't depleted. Um, they have lots of spawn points and can counter you very rapidly with very high threat uh, weapon systems. And let's talk about who uh, you face here and what you'll face. Uh, enemy equipment and skill is that you face God tier SPAA and you have enemy SPAAs that have very good radar with very good range and you're in the range of their weapon systems. You're in the threat envelope almost from the moment you spawn in. So that's pretty crazy there. Enemy skill is like Navy SEAL levels of, of uh, goodness here. Enemy ground forces have supreme situational awareness and actively use cover and concealment to, um, you know, to complicate your targeting. And the enemy is actually prioritizing killing Cass. I mean, killing you. They're actively looking for your helicopter or actively trying to track down your jet. Another one is when you're facing veteran players that don't even use the radar. Instead, they just optically acquire you and launch their missile and then you just blow up because you have no indications that you were locked on to. If you have a missile approach warning system for your helicopter, you'll see your flares and countermeasures go off um, and then you should probably take evasive action. But if you don't know or you weren't paying attention, you're just going to die. There's also the doubly dangerous um, way where they turn off the radar, but they do have an infrared search and track system. So they have thermal sights. They can see you and they launch the missile without locking on to you. So the main thing here is that the enemy continuously denies you weapons employment position because they never allow you to get comfortable. They never allow you to find a position and you are hunted the entire game until either you're shot down or, um, you know, you just go back to base and give up. All right. So let me finish off worst case. So what you have that category, you got poor acquisition systems. You have limited ordnance choices. Think if you only have dumb bombs or simple rockets. You don't have an RWR, you have no countermeasures, you have no missile approach warning system, you can't detect when you're being lazed. I mean, it goes on and on. Like, And if you don't have an air-to-air -air radar or air-to-ground radar, like some of the more advanced um, helicopters in this case, um, then you're going to have that issue because you have no situational awareness enhancing sensors. And also, when you don't have standoff weapons, you are at a disadvantage. So let's move on to maps. So you get a map where... There's lots of cover and concealment for the enemy, very little for you. There's lots of um, like urban areas, built up areas. And one thing I hate when there's no friendly spotting on the ground or the your own team doesn't prioritize targets and they don't spot the targets that need to be killed like enemy SPAA. So hopefully I have painted the context around the worst case scenario and this happens more often than not. I mean, at least in the games I played, um, there were very few times where I had optimal conditions. Usually I had a mix of both, meaning that I had elements of the worst case and the best case scenario in like one bag. Almost never did I get everything lined up, you know, to be like, you know, shining bright like a diamond. Most of the time, especially if I was flying a K-52, what would happen is I would be denied weapons employment position for ground targets but I would be able to use my Vicar missiles on enemy aviation. So, you know, I got a lot of air kills instead of ground kills um, in a K-52. And I had to do that because guess what? We never had air superiority. So hopefully I made some clarifying context around the worst case scenario. And believe it or not, most players encounter the worst case scenario. So like I was saying before, those hundreds of fails, like people just don't remember those. Um, on the cast side of things. You know, when that guy got shot down before he got to even do anything, didn't even get to drop a bomb or fire a missile off and already shot down. All right, so let's talk about some player exploits next. And when these exploits happen to you in the game, you will feel that cast is overpowered. And in that instance, I say yes, it is overpowered. Like radar dead zones. If a especially fixed wing is allowed to get directly above you and your SPAA where you can't pick them up on the radar and next thing you know bombs are raining down you're gonna feel that that's overpowered 
And um, I mean, maybe it's your team's fault for allowing him to get to that position. And maybe that guy in that fixed wing should be enjoying, you know, the fruits of his labor. But it is definitely a um, it's a rough feeling when that when that happens to you. So the high altitude weapons employment in radar dead zones is pretty deadly when someone can get to that position. But it's it's kind of like being flanked when you're on the ground. If you let an enemy get to the flank, um, maybe sometimes your team deserves it. Some standoff weapons, though, are very overpowered. Like, um, I know the Maverick's been nerfed and the Hellfire is, oh my gosh, it's not really even that great. But when you feel that burn from um, standoff weapons, when you can't engage uh, that helicopter or that aircraft um, because they're outside of your own weapons, that does feel, um, you do feel that they're overpowered. Um, so when players change up their attack vectors and they like attack from the direction uh, like that you weren't expecting, like from behind your spawn, or they're waiting for you um, uh, like as you take off from your airfield or something like that, you're gonna feel that, that is, um, that's not fair. And, and that's kind of like airfield camping and spawn camping. I hate when people do that. And those are valid complaints. All right, so hopefully you were paying attention to some of the background footage, especially um, with the K-52. I use that helicopter on purpose. Um, probably because it's what some would say is the most OP heli in the game, you know, the K-50, K-52, and maybe even the Mi-28 NM. Um, so to illustrate that point, I wanted to use those helicopters. When I say yes and no to CAS being OP, I really mean that. It is OP at times, and at other times it isn't. I'm able to, like for example, with the K-52, was able to shoot down enemy aircraft with really no counter as long as they were unaware of me. And I am masked behind me on terrain, so SPAA couldn't see me. My Vicar Miracle missiles um, kind of make short work of enemy aircraft until they see me or until the team, the enemy team, starts working together to kill me. But overall, in one of those K-52 plays, I was never able to really acquire uh, any enemy vehicles because of the constant threat of SPAA and the natural cover and concealment that the town offered. Uh, and SPA couldn't kill me because of the giant mountain that I was hiding behind. I find that you rarely, like I said before, um, get the best case scenario in your favor, and it's just mostly a mixed bag. So overall, is it the player that's underpowered or overpowered, or is it the vehicle? It's mixed here as well, because there are objectively bad players in the game, and there are also objectively overpowered vehicles. Um, there is also, you know, the opposite of that. However, the data people ignore is when there's a mismatch, meaning a good player in a bad vehicle or a bad player in a great vehicle. But anyway, um, overwhelmingly, most of player failures are driven by poor skill, bad tactics and bad timing, or flat out ignoring um, some of the indicators during the battle. I mean, War Thunder is one of the few games I've played where if you make a mistake, I mean, sometimes even a small mistake, you get punished hard. I mean, most of the time, simple observation of the battlefield and a little bit of common sense um, will tell you what, what's going on. It'll tell you the threat level, right? For example, um, don't spawn a jet and then fly in like a zombie and get shocked when you get shot down by SPAA. All right, so let's use this example here. Um, so if you prefer to play tanks only and you don't use CAS and you hate SPAAs, you are going to have a rough time playing War Thunder, ground RB at least, right? Now there's nothing wrong with um, how you choose to have fun. Like I don't criticize how people want to play the game, but you must know that you are not playing the game mode as the game developers intended, meaning you're going to have capability gaps um, in your lineup, meaning that if you can't be bothered to research the counter for CAS, assuming that your nation has one, um, you know, then you really can't be mad that, you know, you were killed by close air support. So in the intro clip, you saw me, um, you know, getting blown up in my Merkava, which was a premium that I just bought from the sale. And in that lineup, I also had the premium A4 for Israel. So that was a very incomplete lineup um, with significant gaps. I didn't have the capability to spawn an SPA and go after the Havoc. So really, that looks like I was getting smashed, but it was really just my own fault, right? All right, so I hope this made sense. Um, last word is 
podcast is OP and at the same time, it's not OP. Um, I think both things can exist in the same space at the same time. Uh, so hopefully this wasn't a rant. And like I said, it makes sense. If you like the video, you know, please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing and um, even hit the uh, notification icon. It really helps the channel out. And uh, I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you in a future video.